So, thanks a lot for opening this conference. Thanks for uh, reminding us why this is important while we're here. Thanks for helping us to take this step. Uh, which will bring us to the first keynote speaker, uh, Dr. Hani Elvana. You have a uh, your own PowerPoint presentation, which uh, Mingo will uh, put on the laptop. In the meanwhile, let me introduce uh, Dr. Hani Elbana. He's the president of Humanitarian Forum, and you are also the co-founder of Islamic Relief back in the mid '80s. So, welcome to you. And the word is yours. We just have to turn on the uh, microphone. I'll, sp I'll speak here. And this one. Now you're on the. And this is the uh, remote, remote control. Thank you very much. Uh, listening to the previous speakers uh, gave me a great challenge to rewrite my speech again. Because I don't have knowledge to be compared to what you have been mentioning in your speeches. But today we should be celebrating. The Mac is a dream that I was dreaming about it long time ago to bring the diaspora together. But we should be celebrating the success and the creation of the map today. The mood of celebration yesterday was the beginning of the Islamic calendar, uh, Islamic year, sorry. And it reminds us of a diaspora individual who immigrated to build community. And this not only our prophet, but this happened to Moses and Prophet Moses and Prophet Abraham and others who were really diaspora and managed to create and build society and community around them. So diaspora should be change maker. Should be change maker and should bring added value to any community. They should not be just living at the side line of the community. This is the role of diaspora as I believe in it. That's why I'm going to skip uh, is it which uh, this way? Okay. No. Maybe. Okay. This is some content. I'm just going to skip through a lot of them, because this is the definition of diaspora, and my definition, which I'm saying, they should be added value, and to any community, they should meet. They should not be treated as. Uh, as contractors by some government, but as real partners. We should be treated as real partners from the beginning to the end of any project could be conducted by a government or by international donor agency. This is my personal experience. I was told to speak about my personal experience. In the UK, we started as a very small organization 32 years ago. There's no vision, no budget, Nothing, no strategy, no office, no desk, only donation box. Okay? But we managed together to focus on the objective and make it very clear, very vibrant, and also for Africa, for the Horn of Africa at that time. The challenge was faith-based, living in a faith-based country. Muslim organization growing in a Christian a country, which was actually a big challenge, but we managed to keep all the parameters safe and clear to grow fast and make the change. Some uh, milestones in the history of Islamic relief, 88 to 92, we managed to respond to humanitarian disasters as well as conflict. Bosnia was one of the ugliest conflict in Europe, humanitarian disasters in Iran, in Sudan, in Bangladesh, as well, and Halabja as well. First funding came to Islamic Relief was 1993 from UNHCR in Bosnia, as well as OD, Overseas Development Administration, ODA, not ODI, ODA in, in Sudan. 
But in 1993 also, recognition by the media, which is very important for any diaspora organization, use media as a partner. We started to swim in the international field in the late 80s, beginning of 90s. And for me as a diaspora, diaspora isn't it, yeah? As an individual, I was attending the international conference as a listener, not a speaker, to learn the language, it's not enough, to learn the philosophy of the spoken language and to learn the culture of the organization who are leading the humanitarian sector. You should not jump at the first meeting and say what you want to say before listening and learning and understanding and comprehending. And this is very, very important. This is our, one of the strategic partners with WFP, with UNSCR and others. We managed to build this because we opened the door 10 years before September the 11th. That's why when September the 11th came and affected all or most of the humanitarian organization, it did not affect Islamic Relief in USA especially. Because 10 years before that, we're opening all the gates. And this is something we have to understand as diaspora organization. Open door policy, transparency, accountability, building partnership, humanity, and independence. I think the role of diaspora has been covered by the other speakers. I'm not going to repeat it. Uh, challenge this another role as well. Uh, Bosnia case is one of the successful diaspora community, which 50% of the country are living abroad and contributing 13% of GDP. Of course, Lebanese, as diaspora, twice the population, and 12 million or 13 million of Lebanese, uh, 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 Lebanese diaspora are living in Europe, in Latin America and others, and the population of the country is 5 billion, and the contribution is immense. Challenges, we're facing it. We are always like, uh, I, I talk about myself, like a small orphan, uh, have no father, nobody to foster him, and everybody is kicking him out. And this is a misunderstanding of the diaspora by the host community, by international agencies, by maybe the, their homeland, you see, in, in their government. All, because nobody trusts us because sometimes, if, if I give my personal experience, I went to a country to help them, said means that you are an agent of uh, six, um, of certain intelligence in Europe and in, in America. I said, what? But anyway, because I was trying to do something positive in such a country. These are success stories of diaspora who made it, whether women or men, in social, in sports. Okay, all of you know them. Stories, they make, they make the change. Of course, you know all this. Nobody from Sweden is here? France? French team? <laughs> Politics? From Latin America to Great Britain? And in science, late Ahmed Zawil, he died recently, unfortunately. And in the UK as well, during Ramadan, the Muslim community raised more than 100 million pounds as a humanitarian organization. Recommendation has been mentioned before by all of you, but I don't want to repeat it because of the time factor, okay? But the MAC for me is a dream. I hope that actually we can strengthen it and we can join it. And need to, need to change the system, yes, we need, and it's one of the recommendations at World Humanitarian Summit in Istanbul uh, in May. We need to make a progressive change of the system, and I see some people from your notch here are sitting <laughs> and uh, it came very strong. We need to also involve the local organization. Localism has to be very, very heavy on the agenda. The South has to be very heavy, heavy in the, on the agenda as well. This is diaspora achieving as members. I was told to do that. This is the launch of uh, uh, famine in Somalia in 2011 with Josette and uh, that was the head of WFP. And this is World Humanitarian Summit in May. And this is His Holiness recognizing the work that we have been doing. And this is the best work 
that any organization can do is to be with the people. Thank you very much.